Hello and welcome. My name is Jason Q. I'm the senior, senior managing attorney at the DC Bar Pro Bono Center in our nonprofit and small business legal assistance programs. Welcome to today's very short recorded webinar on maintaining your corporate status in the District of Columbia. This is a guide to biannual reports and corporate reinstatement requirements for DC nonprofits. So let me set the scene a little bit. Um, and introduce the concept of the DC biennial report. So uh, as you probably already know, as a nonprofit corporation based in DC, you are incorporated as a nonprofit legal entity, a nonprofit corporation. As a freestanding corporation, that means that your nonprofit can own property, enter into contracts, employ employees, uh, own a bank account, all in the nonprofit's corporate name. So what we're talking about today are the DC legal requirements for maintaining that corporate status. And for those who uh, have their corporate status revoked, the process for reinstating your corporate status. Um, the way that nonprofits in DC maintain their corporate status is by filing a form called BRA 25 every two years. And for that reason, we call it a biennial report. That report is filed with the DC Department of Licensing and Consumer Protection, DLCP, uh, up until October of uh, last year. That agency was known as DCRA, the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs. So you might see both of those acronyms bouncing around in some resources or even some of the websites that you'll encounter through this process. So that's DLCP or DCRA. Um, your first biennial report was due the April 1st on the first calendar year after your organization was incorporated, and then subsequent reports are due every two years thereafter. So, for example, if your nonprofit was incorporated in February 2020, your first biennial report would have been due April 1st of 2021 because April 1st would have been the first calendar year after 2020, and then subsequent biennial reports would have been due in, in 2023, and then thereafter every two years. If your nonprofit was incorporated in December 2020, your first biennial report still would have been due April 1st of 2021, and you would be on that same two-year cycle. If you miss the April 1st due date, you have five months to still file a late report um, that late report is going to have a $50 filing fee, but if you get it in with it, uh, by September 1st of the due date year, that's no problem. You just pay the late filing fee, and if the report is still accepted, nothing happens to your corporate status. If you fail to file a BR25 by September 1st, so if you run out that five-month late filing window, your nonprofit's corporate status will automatically be dissolved, something we call an administrative dissolution, and it will appear as revoked in DC corporate databases. If your nonprofit's corporate status is revoked, that can have a number of ramifications. You might not be able to obtain a business license or perform other business functions in the district. You won't be able to obtain a certificate of good standing to prove that your nonprofit is in good standing here in DC, but also if you need to provide that kind of certification to other jurisdictions or other entities outside of DC. You might also have trouble enforcing your contracts or other legal agreements um, in the District of Columbia and beyond. So it's, it's very important that people maintain their corporate status and if they are revoked to seek reinstatement of that corporate status as soon as possible. One note that I wanna make here is that revoked corporate status is not the same thing as having your 501c3 tax exempt status revoked by the IRS. There are two different processes. Um, just because your DC corporate status is revoked does not mean that your IRS's tax exempt status is revoked. And in the same vein, you can have your IRS corporate status, uh, sorry, IRS tax exempt status revoked without having your DC corporate status revoked. So they're two separate conversations. Just it's not within the scope of what we're talking about today, but a common way to lose your IRS tax exempt status is by failing to file your Form 990 with the IRS for three consecutive. Uh, process in a different conversation. While it is possible to submit paper files, uh, it's highly that you use the online filing portal, which is Corp highly recommended that you use online.dlcp.dc.gov and the rest of the uh, filing doing is process one is how to look up your status on the portal. Uh, the second part, I'm going to walk you through how to file a year um, 
ERA 25 report. And then at the end, I go through the um, uh, restatement process through the corporate online filing portal. Okay, so let's start with part one, how to look up your corporate status. If you don't know um, whether or not you're on, you're on time with your BRA 25 filings, if you don't know what your filing cycle is, if you don't know when the last time you filed a report, this is, this is how you look that up. So we're gonna go on that corponline.dlcp portal. It's gonna ask you to log in with an Access DC account. If you don't already have an Access DC account, you have to make one and then log into the, the portal using that account. It's a free process to make an account and it's pretty straightforward. So I'm not gonna walk you through it there. Once you've logged in with your Access DC account, this is the Corp Online homepage or landing page. So right now, if we wanna look up what our corporate status is and see what our filing cycle is, we're gonna use the find an organization um, search field here on the homepage. And we're just gonna type in the name of our organization or if we know the filing number that DC has for organization, we can try that as well. Uh, a note that filing number is not your federal EIN, it's a DC specific file number. So you can try your name, you can try the file number. A tip for this search field and any other search field on this website is under search options, you can change the depth of the search so that the search field uh, contains the words that you put in. By default, your search term will have to be the beginning of uh, the, the, the record in the DC database. Sometimes it's easier to find an organization by switching that search depth to contains, which means that it'll spit out any organization that contains the words you put into the field. I'm gonna use our organization here as just an example, the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. So I just searched using the field, a term Pro Bono Center. I changed that search depth to contains and it did find my organization. Um, by default, the, it'll be either exact match or starts with, which would have meant that I would have had to put in DC Bar Pro Bono Center exactly in that order, probably with the correct punctuation in order to find my organization. So something I get a lot from people is that they have a hard time finding their organizations using the search tool. And my tip there is again, switch the search depth to contains and then use a few of the keywords in your organization's name. That might make it a little bit easier to find. But no matter what, we're gonna you know, keep searching until we find our organization. We see we have the name here, our file number, our initial registration date, our organization status is active, that's good. If we had missed our biannual reports by, by the late filing deadline, that would have been automatically switched to revoked and we would have to reinstate it. So I'm in pretty good shape. Um, if I click on that organization name, I'll get into the, the file that we have here on the online database. On the main page, we have basic info about our nonprofit. I wanna turn your attention to that second tab here under reports. If we click reports, we get a filing history of all of our biannual reports. So you can see here at the DC Bar Pro Bono Center, we've been more or less filing them every two years. We filed our last one in 2022. That means that our next one is gonna be due in 2024. So we are on a even year filing cycle, okay? So that's how you look up your organization's corporate status. Let's go through a similar um, walkthrough for how to file a current year BRA 25 biannual report. So that means a biannual report that's due April 1st, um, but you can also file it up to five months late. So whether you're filing it on time before April 1st or you're filing it late between April 1st and August 31st, this would be the process that you would use. So we're gonna go back onto that Corp Online homepage. Um, we're gonna select file a current year biannual report in these five graphic main options that we have at the top of that page. That'll send us to an information sheet about the filing. You should read through this. It gives you basic background information about the BRA 25. Then the next page is the same search field that we might have seen in the, in the previous lookup process. So again, put in your organization's name. If you're having a hard time finding your organization, click search options and use the toggles to change the search depth. That might help you find your organization. So here I'm just using a test organization as an example. I put in my term, I found my organization. I'm gonna click on that organization's name again. And then once I click on that organization's name, it'll open up the online filing wizard for the BRA 25. And that wizard's gonna ask us to click through a number of pages and questions. And then finally at the end, it's gonna ask us to submit our filing fee and then we're gonna be good to go. Just a few tips for completing the BRA 25, uh, you know, defining some of the terms. Again, the instruction sheet speaks to these concepts, but let me talk to you about them here. So one thing you'll be asked to do is to name a registered agent. You have two options when it comes to registered agents. 
You can have a non-commercial registered agent. This gives any person or business with a physical street address in DC that's accessible and staffed or occupied during regular business hours. That would be your approach with a non-commercial registered agent. So that could be someone who works at your nonprofit, at your nonprofit's address, if you do have an office and an address. Some organizations use a board member or a pro bono attorney or some other business or entity with, a, again, a physical street address in the district where they can be accessed during regular business offer, uh, hours to uh, receive official mailings, to receive corp summons, uh, to receive other documents and, and things like that. If for any reason you can't get a non-commercial registered agent to agree to be a registered agent in DC, you can select a commercial registered agent. So this is a company that you actually pay to perform the role of your registered agent. So if you go that direction, there will be a drop-down list of approved registered agents that you can select, choose the company that you're using, make sure that you've actually retained that company and are paying them, and then that would be the way that you, you complete this, um, this part of the form. So no matter what, as part of the BRA 25 by new report, you're gonna update your registered agent. Your current registered agent will be filled in by default. If you'd like to stay with that person or entity, then you don't have to change anything, but this might be a good opportunity to update your registered agent information to uh, the most current contact. Something that the forum has recently started asking is for your organization purpose. Um, so there's two parts to this. There's a drop-down menu where you select a get general category of activity for your nonprofit. Um, there are a number of options in the in the drop down that might fit what you're doing so find the option that's the best fit um, some ones that i'm seeing are uh, an educational organization an organization that provides healthcare or social assistance an organization that works in arts entertainment or recreation or there's one large category for religious grant making civic professional and similar organizations i think across of those options every nonprofit in dc should be able to find one high level category that they fit under so select the best option for you and then there's also a description text box where you can enter a more detailed description of your of your mission and activities um, People should be putting in there basically the same mission statement that you use on your 990 and that should match up with your mission statement in your articles and bylaws. That provides a, a specific but still pretty high level overview of what your, your mission and core activities are. Um, another page that you'll see is a page asking to list your beneficial owners. Um, another term that DC uses for these people are the governors of your organization. So for a nonprofit, you're going to list all of the officers and the directors on your board of direction, uh, board of directors in this field. So you, you'll see there's going to be lines to enter the name, addresses, contact information for each person, and then there's a box that says add additional governor. So you'll you'll finish adding one, and then you'll choose that box to add the second, and you know rinse and repeat until you've added all of your officers and directors. And this will create a up-to-date list of officers and directors on your corp online profile. And then finally, um, there's something called uh, that you'll get to the part where you're paying your filing fees. So the standard filing fee for BRA 25 is $80. If you file it after the April 1st deadline for that year, you must pay an additional $50 late fee for a total of $130. All right, so that's the BRA 25. Um, the last part of today's webinar, I'm just gonna walk you through what happens if you've missed the, the um, uh, the September, sorry, the August 31st filing deadline, this slide should say August 31st filing deadline for a current year BRA 25. If you do that, again, your corporate status is automatically revoked and you'll have to go through this reinstatement process instead of the regular filing process that we've been describing up till now. So again, this is for an organization that have missed any BRA 25, they fail to file it within five months of April 1st. Uh, it meaning that they fail to file it by August 31st of the due year. If that's your situation, on this Corp Online homepage, you're gonna select Other Online Services, the far right option, and you're gonna again use a search field to find the name of your organization in the Corpa database. I have an example here, and so we're gonna click that organization name link and that'll open up all of the online forms that you can file for the organization. And for organizations that are revoked, you're gonna see two options. You're gonna see BRA 25 for revoked entities. That's where you're gonna start. And then once you've filed all of your past due biannual reports, you'll file form GN5 
which is your application to reinstate your organization's corporate status. Okay, so again, a two-step process. We're going to file all of the past due biennial reports, including the fees and late fees that are associated with those reports. And then once they're all in the system, we're going to file the GN5 application to reinstate our corporate status. So we're going to start with that BRA25 link. Again, we'll get an information sheet um, for instructions on the form. Uh, the next page is, is going to be different than a, than a current year form. It's going to give us a list of all of the overdue BRA25s that we have for our organization. So in this example, I'm using an organization that actually hasn't filed a BRA25 since 20 uh, since 2001. So it has a number of late fee forms here, uh, starting from 2003 right up until 2023. And it's going to file have to file every single one of those late BRA 25s in order to re um, reinstate its corporate status. For a lot of you, you won't have missed this many BRA 25s. You might only have one or two on the list, and you'll have to file those uh, as part of this process. So start with the oldest report that you have that's overdue, uh, and then click continue here on this page. And then you're just going to go through the same process that I described in the last section for completing the BRA 25. So complete the BRA 25 for that report year, including paying the $130 combined filing and late fee, and then go back into, um, uh, you know, uh, into the beginning of this section and do it again for any overdue BRA 25s. Once you've filed all of your late BRA 25s, we can move on to the second and final step, which is to file form GN5. That's the application to reinstate our corporate status. That's a pretty straightforward form, so there's not much to, to walk through with you. Um, the Corp Online portal will, will only allow you to access GN, GN5 when all of the past two BRA25s are in. Um, the form itself is pretty simple and straightforward. You're basically just certifying that you filed all of your late reports and that your registered agent is current and that everything is good to go. Um, it's going to ask you for your date of administrative dilution, dissolution as part of the as part of the GN5, if it does enter September 1st of the first year, your organization failed to file its BRA 25 within the five month late filing window, um, because that's when your status would have been um, administratively dissolved. And the GN5 has its own $80 filing fee. So in terms of fees for this whole process, it's you know um, $80 for an on-time BRA 25, $130 for all of your late ones, plus the $80 filing fee for GN5. Okay, that's the end of this Quick Kids presentation. If you have any questions, uh, find us here at the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. You can contact me at jqu at dcbar.org if you have additional questions. I would also encourage you to look at our resource library, which is lawhelp.org slash dc slash npsb. Um, that is our entire resource collection, including a lot of information about ongoing compliance requirements for DC organizations and links to a whole uh, skew of, of both written and recorded web resources for you to peruse. All right. Well, take care, everyone. Good luck on filing their BRA 25s and seeking reinstatement if necessary. Uh, I hope to talk to you soon.